Hey y'all! What's up, what's up, what's up? I am so excited for this live today. We're gonna be talking about the study abroad redo grant, my study abroad redo grant, and how to win it. I apply to a lot of grants, right? And if you follow me, you know that. But I have yet to see someone who sponsors a grant or has a grant go on live and like kind of walk people through the application process or answer their questions directly or give them direct feedback. And like the purpose of having this grant is not to make it like you guys do work and I'm like judging you or anything like that. What I want is for you guys to most authentically tell your stories and to see your stories and for you to be successful. So like I want every application that comes in to be fire, like perfectly exactly what I asked for, perfectly exactly to the prompt. Like I want it to be really good. So that's why I want to help you. I don't want it to be like whoever can guess the best wins. Like it's not a contest like that. I want you guys to have good applications, which is why we're having this one-on-one -on -one talk. So stay tuned for this probably 20 to 30 minute talk. If you have questions, drop them in the chat. But what I'm gonna do is I have taken screenshots of the application page and the questions. So we're gonna go through that together and I'm gonna kind of like answer any small questions that you might have along the way. And then I'm gonna go through the literal actual application questions with you. And I'm gonna save this video to my feed. So if you are like confused, you need to go back, you can do that. But we're gonna walk through it together. So I like, I want all of these things to be obvious and clear to you. So, okay, are you ready? Let's hit it. Okay, so this is the study abroad redo grant. If, well, I mean, you can see it on the application page itself, but as a small summary, I loved my study abroad experience. I wish that everyone in the world could have a study abroad experience as great as mine. That is not the case. I wanna help close that gap to bridge that gap. And so, if you had a study abroad experience and it was bad, if you tried to have one and COVID took it away, if you didn't even go to college so you never even had a chance of getting one, this is a grant for you to have a second chance at study abroad. And it doesn't have to be a traditional study abroad. I kind of prefer, I think, the ones that are not traditional study abroad, but if you do wanna have like a, you're still in college, you will need to get these credits, that's completely fine. Those applications are still accepted. But I'm looking for like, the undocumented immigrant who used to not be able to travel and now is documented and can travel, she gets a redo. I'm looking for the guy who, I don't know, had to drop out of college to take care of his family member and he get to study abroad. I'm looking for his application. I'm looking for their application. So those are the people that this grant is truly meant for, but it's kind of open for a reason because there are stories that I can't even imagine who deserve a study abroad redo. And that's who this grant is for. So let's go through the pages together and again, I'm Gabby Beckford. I'm so excited for this. Drop questions if you have them. I'll try to answer them during this live. Okay, so let's start on the application page itself. This is the application page. It's paxlight.com slash S-A-R-G. I'm gonna pin that here so that you can start your application as we're talking. Like, that's what I would do if I was watching this. I'd be like, I have ADD. I am gonna take notes, but I won't actually sit down to, <laughs> to start the application. Do it now. Do it now. Watch this on your phone. Open up your laptop right now. Do it now. Okay. So this is the link. I'm pinning it, pinning it, pinning it. That's the link. So this is the application page, right? Repeat after me. You do not have to be a student to study abroad. Because to me, study abroad is not like you go to some place using your passport, you get three credits, you come back home. To me, study abroad is about intentionally learning about having a, like the, the time of your life, honestly, fun is like a huge aspect of it. And it's about like having an intentional, personal growth experience. It's not just about learning a language, it's about growing internally as a person. I think all makes us better global citizens, you know? So that's the top of the page. Next is this part. This is the, like you scroll down a little bit on the page this is what you see. I have a whole video about why I made the grant, why I like was inspired to like work with my sponsors. Shout out to Go Overseas and shout out to the Nomadic Network for sponsoring two of these awesome grants. We're giving away three total. Um, watch the video. If I, again, were watching this or if I was applying to this, I'd be like, I wanna know everything about their why so that I can appeal to that in my application. I wanna know what makes Gabby tick. I wanna know about Pax Light. I wanna know about the sponsors because we're the ones giving the money away. If I were you, I would be watching this video and being like, all right, what are the small things she, she mentioned she's passionate about? Why, like, what is this whole grant really about? At, like deep at its core so that in your application, you can appeal to that because we're giving away this money for a reason. You should try to be that reason. You should be the reason, right? Be the solution to my problem, right? Okay, so I hope that's insightful. The minute's a video long, or the video's a minute long. Just watch it, it's quick, it's easy. 
this is, I scroll down a little bit more. This is what you see. Pax Light mission is to blah. We're passionate about blah. This is our first grant. Yay, so excited. If I were you, I would take note of this. If you go through the application questions, which we'll do soon, you'll see that there's a question about Pax Light mission. This is the Pax Light mission. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I tried to out, like, this is very intentional, the way I structured this application page. I'm, I'm trying to help you. So it's all right there. This is all on the same page, by the way. So you go to paxlight.com slash SARG. You're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You see all of this. And at the very end, you see the actual application form. Okay. We're on the same page, right? Let me see if there's any questions so far. And it has to be for study, right? We will get to that in a second. So great question. I will get to that in just a second. I would love to apply. Do you have to be enrolled in a school or university? Is it open for independent study? Great question. We're going to get to that. Uh, again soon, but let's go back to this. Repeat after me. You do not have to be a student to study abroad. Repeat, are you? You do not have to be a student to study abroad. No, I'm not looking for, I mean, I would, I, if you were a student, a freshman who tried to study abroad and COVID ruined it and now you're a senior and you're like, okay, but my study abroad was still ruined. Apply, like it's for people who study abroad was ruined or they didn't get a chance at it or they need another chance at it. This is for you. So do you need to be a student? No. And part of my point is that I studied abroad even after college when I wasn't a student through the PTO that I share on a daily basis. I went to South Korea after I graduated on a scholarship for free and I studied Korean language. Like there are, you do not have to be a student to study abroad. That's the point, right? And also I feel like my, I don't know, make, let, let me know if my earrings are making noise. I feel like they're clanking against these headphones and I'm like, wait, can you all hear me? Okay, so... If you keep scrolling down this page, what you'll see is the who are we looking for? I was like, oh, I, this is what you're looking for. You have to be 18 plus. Can I be 40? Can I be 42? Can I be 51? Can I be uh, 19? Can I be 27? Girl, why are you trying to disqualify yourself? I said you have to be 18 plus, period, by April 15th. So if you're 17 right now and you turn 18 on April 14th, you're good. Stop trying to disqualify yourself, please. I, that's like a huge mental block I have in my life. I'm like, why are you trying to disqualify yourself and, and make me give you reasons that you're not applicable? If I said you're 18 plus, you're 18 plus, you're good. Don't ask more questions. That's it. Apply. You have to be a resident of the 50 or the 48 contiguous United States or its territories. I hate seeing applications that are like, Amer like you have to be from the U.S. but no Puerto Rico. I hate that. How come y'all pay taxes and you have passports and you can't apply to these scholarships. So you can apply to mine. I want it to be inclusive. So you have to be from the US and you have to be, uh, or its territories. You have to be a resident of the US or its territories specifically. Um, and then you need to do, you need to a redo of your study abroad. Again, that's very broad for a reason. You just want to redo and you have to convince me that your reason's good. I'm not going to give you, I mean, I give you some examples which we'll go through, but I'm not going to say like, that's a good reason. That's a bad reason. That's a good reason. That's a bad reason. We'll go through the judging process with our judges using a rubric that is based on how passionate your reason is, how well thought out your reason is, how to our mission is your reason. Again, don't make me disqualify you before you get to apply. Like that is you self-sabotaging you. That is you upper limiting yourself. Do you need a redo of your study abroad? That's a yes or no question. If the answer is no, this isn't for you. Your reason won't be good enough and you'll waste all your time trying. Like you're like, I had a great study abroad, but I could do another one. This isn't for you. But if you're like, I literally tried to study abroad and my mom got cancer and I had to come home to take care of her. We had no money. That's a great reason to study abroad, a uh, redo of a study abroad. If you're like, I wanted to study abroad, but honestly, I was so overwhelmed that I didn't even know where to start. And I just like time passed and I graduated and I just didn't. That's a great reason. If you tried to study abroad and I like, uh, I don't know, a uh, uh, hurricane hit your country that you wanted to go to. You wanted to go to Sri Lanka, then you had to come home. That's a great reason. Those are your reasons. It's okay. Tell us your reasons and we'll decide if they're good or not, but you should still apply. Um, and you do not need to be following me on social media. I, again, hate scholarships and grants that are like, you have to follow me. Would it be great if you were following me? Yes. Do we check? Yes. Do you have to, to win? Absolutely not. If you have a strong story and you need this money, we're going to choose you. This is not like a Gabby gets a hundred thousand followers from this grant. Like I'm trying to give money to people who want this experience. I want you to have a good travel experience. Okay, so I think that, oh, here we go. 
this is uh, this is one that I think is really gonna be helpful for you guys. All the questions that I've gotten so far through my DMs, through my emails, through you know everything like that, I have put into this frequently asked questions section because I know that if one person's asking it, at least forty other people are wondering, right? So this is the frequently asked question. This link, packsite.com slash S-A-R-G, you're gonna see this. You can open up each of these individually. Who is eligible? I'm not eligible and I'm depressed. What do I do? I have tips and resources and advice for you. What counts as a study abroad experience? I'll pretty much, I just said what I just said out loud, that's what I said there. Can I bring my kid? You know, if you're 51, you probably have a husband or a partner or a kid. Like, can you bring them? I answer that there. What are some study abroad examples? Maybe you're like, I definitely need a redo of my study abroad, but like, because there's no program aspect that I can't like Google study abroad programs, I'm kind of like confused. Like what, what should my study abroad be? I give you some starter examples. One of them I give, for example, is learning how to surf. Maybe you have always dreamed about learning how to surf. Is that technically a study abroad? No. Would a college ever give you credit for that? Maybe as an elective, but probably not. Is that learning? Is that intentional? If you, do you think it will help you grow? If you explain that to me well enough, you could win on your, like with a pitch that's like, I wanna go surfing in Costa Rica for two months. Okay, girl, I love that. Why would I say no to that? And that's what I mean that this is not a traditional study abroad. It's less rules, way more fun. And if your goal is to get a certificate in, I don't know, get CPR certified in Australia for like scuba diving, get your PADI certification, um, get your TEFL, like learn to teach, Eng like get certified to teach English in different countries. All of those official certifications are still good. That's totally fine. I love those and they show a lot of intentionality with the program you wanna choose, that's fine. But it's open and it's broad for a reason because I don't think study abroad should be limited to like, here's an S like here's a little SAT quiz, how much did you learn on your trip? It's about you, it's very subjective. So go to this set, like frequently asked questions section, click through all of these, open them up, they're there for you. Okay, let me see if there's any more questions here right now in the comments. If you have a question, drop it now. After this, we're gonna go into the actual application section, like the questions itself, all right? So tag your friends, send this video to them. I'm gonna take two minutes for you to do that. Send this video to your friends who are like, you guys were like, okay, we're gonna apply together. Wait, she's giving a tell all. Tune them in right now. And I'm gonna answer any questions that are in the comments. Love, yay, thank you, Sabrina, I'm glad you like it. Are applicants open for anybody, not just for US students? This one is for US, I didn't say US citizens, I said US residents. And really, if you have a bank account in the US and can receive funds, you can apply. Am I checking passports? No. Am I the cops? No. Like if you, and that's the other thing too, is if you are, for example, currently undocumented, and your study abroad redo goal is to hike the Pacific Crest. I think that's a that's a route in Western US. Like, go hiking or get patty certified or like I don't. I'm not the cops. I'm just trying to give money to people who have a great reason for wanting to study abroad again, have an intentional travel experience again. So, am I checking passports? No. Am I? Do I need to be able to deposit the money in your bank account? Yes. So that's what the US citizen resident resident um thing is about i just have to be able to give you the money and we're going to be figuring that out for the future grants um i do my next or maybe not the next one but the one after that i think will open up worldwide i'm very excited for that but this one is only for the us and that's why it says i'm not eligible what do i do i have all this what i just said in there so it's not a secret this one is the way it is for a reason and the next one or the next one after that i got y'all uh, let me answer any more questions. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I'm so excited to see you. Missed your chance for work. Oh, uh, missed your chance to study abroad for work when you were 14. Yeah, this is for you. This really is for you. What if you've already been able to travel a lot? Does that make you less appealing? That's a great way to ask, answer that. Does it make you less appealing? Yes, because if I am looking for people who need a study abroad redo, um, I mean, that's who I'm prioritizing, right? And study abroad is usually for a lot of us, maybe our first or second international trip. That being said, if you've traveled a lot and your pitch is that you feel like your travel has been super unfulfilling because it hasn't been intentional, the whole point of this is to encourage people to have intentional learning, personal growth travel experiences. If you wanna pitch me well enough that you've, like, I've traveled a lot, but somehow it just hasn't been as good. I studied abroad, but I flaunt, like I, what is it called? wasted it 
Um, I would love a chance to redo and have like a super intentional one. Here's how I'd make it super intentional. That's a pitch. Like, that's what I'm saying. Stop. Don't like disqualify yourself. If you have a good pitch and you're like, okay, technically I did this, but I have pitch, pitch it, pitch it. Make sure it's strong. Make sure I get what you're trying to say. Make sure your point is conveyed, but pitch me like I'm ready. Okay. Any more questions? It looks like there's a video requirement. Yes, we're gonna go through the questions right now. Got you. Yeah. Someone said, I can't vote for president either. I think that's so crazy. How are you gonna be a territory and you don't get all the rights? Girl, at least you have the right to this scholarship. I wanna see your applications if you are from US Virgin Islands, Guam, uh, Puerto Rico. I think there's another one. Some islands. I'm sorry I'm missing you. But all of you are welcome to apply. Um. Let me see if there's any more questions. Okay, I'm glad it sounds like you guys can hear me too. Wait, I'm excited, I just realized I qualify. That's why I'm having this live. That's why I'm having this live. I'm super glad. All right, let's see. Have you tapped in all your friends who are gonna come in? Cause we're about to get started through the questions themselves, okay? So same page, packsite.com slash S-A-R-G. And now we're going through the question portion. This is how the questions start out, y'all. We're starting out very easy breezy out the gate. These take half a second, so I'm really not even gonna, like, please. I hope you, I hope you know the answers to these, okay? So this is like four questions already. They're pretty obvious. Um, and then these are the next questions. Pretty obvious again, they take half a second. That's why I, I know it's, Maybe if I said like, there's 15 questions, you're like, oh my God, it's gonna take an hour and a half. I gotta set aside the time. Like, I uh, just like kind of avoiding it. This are, these are already eight questions, please, <laughs> please. You could be doing these right now. And again, I hope you are. If you're watching this video, I hope your laptop's open and I hope you're like, oh, this is so easy. Walk through it with me. This is how you press submit. Okay, uh, someone just asked, how many winners will there be? Three, three people. 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. A total of $15,000 is being given away. Each person will get $5,000 to make their study abroad dreams come true. And to add granularity to that, if you read the terms and conditions, which I highly recommend, you will see the way that we pay that out is that like the, normally the biggest costs for any trip are your accommodations and your flights. Those you will book and we will reimburse for like, does that make sense? No. I lied about that, sorry about that. Those two are the biggest costs usually for a trip. We will buy those for you using the grant money and then whatever's left over from that, we give you directly deposited into your bank account. So the flight and the accommodations we book for you and then everything that's left over. So if your flight's a hundred bucks and your accommodations are, I don't know, you wanna go camping, you get like most of the money. And that's not to say it's good or bad, but if you're flying to Japan, that flight might be, might cost a thousand dollars and then your accommodations might cost a thousand dollars. We purchase those for you directly. And then whatever's left over gets direct deposited into your bank account. And that's just the only way that we can make sure that this money is going to the study abroad redo experience, at least most of it. Like that's our, our way that we've decided with our advisory board and everything to make sure the money's going towards that and not necessarily to like shopping. So I hope that makes sense too. Okay, so let's get into the real questions of this grant. All right, first question. Tell us about any past studying abroad experience. Have you studied abroad previously? Why or why not? What role did the following factors play in limiting your access to study abroad? And we list them out here for you. You don't even have to think about like, okay, so I didn't study abroad, but like why? Was that 20 years ago, 10 years ago, three years ago? Like why didn't I? We gave you some examples to maybe like jog your memory of like, oh yeah, I really wanted to study abroad, but I could not figure out how to make the tra like the credits transfer and my school study abroad department was so unhelpful and I was overwhelmed and like it just never happened for me. Tell us that story. Maximum 500 words, which I think is about two to three paragraphs. You have to be concise. That's part of it is that I know, especially as someone who applies to grants, trust me, I could go on and on and on. I'm like, I need more than 500 words to tell you why I was started. No one wanted me to be great. They didn't want me to study abroad. I, trust me, I get uh, waxing poetically talking a lot, but keep it concise, tell us. I mean, you can answer these questions directly or you could have one answer that's just like, 
explains that, yes, I studied abroad, but it got canceled. Yes, I studied abroad, but it was awful. No, I never studied abroad because, or I almost studied abroad, but my scholarship got taken away. Something like that. Just be concise and tell us, have you ever studied abroad? Yes or no. I need to be able to get a yes or no out of that. And why? Let me see if there's any questions. All right, we're good. Okay, we're doing good so far. Again, if you're jumping in here kind of late, I'm Gabby Beckford. I'm giving away $15,000 in, I'll say study abroad scholarships, but it's for non-students and it is a very lax study abroad. Study abroad, it's very in quotation marks. Um, so the link to the study abroad application is pinned right here, paxlight.com slash S-A-R-G. And we're walking through the application right now. And yes, this will be saved to my profile. All right, so that's the very first real question, okay? The next question, yeah. Tell us about your study abroad redo green. Dream, study abroad redo dream. So can you say that five times fast? That's a lot of Ds. Um, if you won this grant, where would you go? What would you do and why? We wanna see your vision come to life here, be specific. So already I've seen some, some submissions come in that are like, Oh, I would love to study abroad again. Study abroad is so important because, like, did you know the statistics on study abroad in America? Only 50% of people who want to get to, and I'm like, what? I mean, love it. I would love that for, like, a paper if I was your English teacher. But what I wanted to know was, if you won this $5,000 grant, where would you go? What would you do and why? Like, what I'm asking is exactly what's written there. Answer it. And this is a tip for anything you apply to, scholarship, college, like it doesn't matter. Answer the question that's asked, not the question that you think is being asked or the question that you skimmed through this really fast and you're like, oh yeah, I love it. Read it once, twice, three times through and then answer specifically. So again, it's only 500 words and I wanna see your vision come to life. What does that mean? Being specific, being short, being hmm, descriptive. So if your dream is to redo your study abroad. You're like, originally my study abroad was to go to Australia. I was going to study math. I'm not a student anymore. I have no use for studying math, but I would still love to go to Australia. What I want to do while I'm there is work at an animal conservation program. Here's the program. It's eight weeks long. The reason I would want to do this as my study abroad is because I have always loved animals, but my job is very corporate. I'm an accountant. I'm never around animals, but I've never gotten to like explore that side of myself. That's why I want to go to Australia and work with koalas and wallabies. Great pitch. Amazing. Stars. Tens across the board. That's what I'm looking for. So the name of a specific program, maybe. Or where you want to go in a very compelling story as to why. Or what about your study abroad experience is like the essence of why you want to relieve it. Maybe you're like, I don't even know where I want to go. Honestly, I've been sitting here for three days trying to think of a place, but I realized it doesn't matter where I go. All I want is to be able to meet new people. And so the way I'm gonna do that, no matter what my study abroad experience is, I'm gonna backpack through Southeast Asia. I'm gonna go to like four or five countries. I actually have no idea clue where I'm gonna go, but the way I'm gonna make sure that this is like still a study abroad experience is that in each place I'm gonna document, I'm gonna video myself interviewing someone in each different country. That's a great fucking fetch. And if you pitch that, I'm gonna be like, I know you got that from my lab because I just pitched it to you. But that's a great example of a pitch. And so that's why I don't want be specific. What country are you going to go to? Oh, well, I don't know that, so I can't apply. Girl, if I, if you don't stop thinking of reasons why you can't apply, like what the, come on, girl. Hopefully this live is making you feel more confident in your application because I just want to see the, your why. I want to see your why you want to have an intentional travel experience. And again, I call it study abroad because it's just that an intentional educational life, personal growth experience abroad. But does it have to be for college credits? No. Do I need you to like send a report back? Yes, but does it need to be superficial? No. You'll see later that we have a social media component or if you win, we're gonna ask you to like document some of your trip or like journal every day of it and send us a summary of it. And like just some sort of reflective component of your trip. That's what we wanna see. We wanna make sure that it's had an impact on you. And this is again, because I'm the opportunity queen, a tip for any scholarship you apply to Anyone who gives out money wants an ROI. Usually that ROI is like marketing or like tax dollars off in like taxes and stuff leaders by those big companies. I do not get tax dollars off for this, trust me. I am paying out of pocket. Um, but this is what I love to do, so it's okay. 
But there's always an ROI. And the ROI that I want from this, as a per, like a person who's hosting this and sponsoring a grant in this, is I want to see that it had an impact on your life. Ideally, I would want to see that this grant changes your life. That you're like, oh my God, after doing this grant and like traveling with this $5,000, like this $5,000 is going to turn into $100,000 for me in the way that I give back to my community or the way that I like absolutely change everyone's life. Or like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job because of this grant and I'm going to do what I love. Or like, I want to see that this has an impact on you. It doesn't have to be so, you know, huge. It doesn't have to have a dollar sign on it, but I just want to see that your reflective component shows like this is what you needed in your life. So that's what I'm looking for. Someone says, do we send a summary in this or do we email it to you? If you email it to me, I will delete it. If you email anything like this to me, I will delete it so fast. Uh, it's faster than you can blink. What you need to do is go to this link, paxlight.com slash S-A-R-G, and you need to fill out this form. This is a form. You fill it out with the answers that you want to answer with, and then you submit it through the form. If I get any emails... I'm gonna feel some type of way, it's not gonna be a good type of way. Do not email me with your application directly. That's why we have the form, to keep them all in one place. And at the end of this, when we, we have a, a panel of judges, seven judges who will go through these applications together. It's not just me, it's not just my bias. We have, a, we have amazing uh, seven judges who will be judging these things, your applications. We have a rubric for them. They need to be in that whole big list through this application form. If it's not, it's not gonna be seen it's not gonna be counted. So make sure you submit through this form. And if you've already submitted, I know we changed this form, I think uh, three or four days after we posted it. If you already submitted, you're good. Unless after this live, you're like, oh my God, I wanna resubmit. Like I have something, I have my ideas changed. Like, oh no, I need to resubmit. You can use this form and resubmit it again. If you have already submitted, that's totally fine. Resubmit again. Um, in this form. And we'll, all, we'll what we'll do is count the latest submission. So if you submit a really good first one and the second one, you get kind of drunk with your friends and you submit an example one, you're like, oh my God, imagine if I told her I wanted to find, we're gonna see the second one. <laughs> we're only gonna see the second one. And that's what we're gonna count. So make sure the last one that you submit is the one that you want seen. Thank you for doing this. Oh my God, yay, I'm glad. I feel like this is what, and I hope this is an example to any other scholarships or grants or programs out there. This is why the, the FaceTime, the one-on-one -on -one is good because you just never know what's communicated. Um, someone asked, I'd like to do a one-month work-study trip with an existing tour company. Would I qualify? The question of to would you qualify, let's go back again, y'all. We're bringing it back. This is if you will qualify. Are you 18 plus by April 15, 2023? Yes or no? Are you a resident of the 50 United States, including its territories? Do you need a redo of your study abroad experience? Those are the three ways that you qualify. That's it. That's it. If you can answer yes, 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 then you qualify. And we have a quiz, by the way, at the very top of the page. So this is the page that you land on right there in yellow. It's kind of hidden here. But at the yellow it says, are you eligible? Find out in one minute. Click the button. Click the button. That's why we made the button to click. Click the button, find out. As far as your specific pitch, it depends, like your one sentence pitch here, to me, that sounds like it could be eligible, but again, as I've explained in this live, it depends on the context and the story you spin. It depends, it depends. You have to pitch it fully and I need to see the full story behind it to decide that. And it'll, again, not be just up to me, it's up to our judges, um, who are all travel and um, opportunity experts in their own right, which is why they're judges of this contest. Shout out to you guys, you all are fantastic. Um, all right, let's get to the next question. All right, here we go. Any other questions in here? I know there's three grants. Will you encourage couples to apply separately? No, I will not. No, I will not. Couples get no espresso privileges in this scholarship or really anywhere in my brand right now. Uh, just because why? Why would you like, uh, I say it in the, in the frequently asked questions and which is where you need to go. Can I bring my kid husband boyfriend? If you want to apply in one way and your husband wants to, or your partner wants to apply separately, you could both win. You, you get $10,000. Wow. How would I know? Basically, how would I know? Um, if you are pitching, part of your story is that you're going to be traveling together this whole time and in your reflection, your videos or your, or your writing or your photos that you provide to us, I see you and your husband both want the $5,000 and I'm like... 
Girl, fuck. Um, I would just say, whatever you decide to do, be very transparent in your application. Um, you can pitch as a couple in one, you could pitch separately, like, you better just hope both of them are really amazing pitches. But am I encouraging couples to apply separately or together? No, I don't care. Uh, what I want is for this to go to people who need a study abroad experience. So what I imagine is that there's one of the partners who is like, I, I need to study abroad experience, it's perfect for me. And then you're like, okay, but my husband's gonna come. I'd probably say that you pitch one individually. Because if your partner tries to pitch one and you're, they're like, uh, yeah, my wife's doing this, so I wanna do it too. They're not gonna win anyway, so don't even waste their time. You should probably just pitch yourself and be like, I have a kid who I cannot leave at home, or a dog I cannot leave at home, can they come? I'm not gonna say no. Again, this is a study abroad redo, which means less rules, more fun, and I wrote it. So I'm not the cops and I'm not like a big organization where I'm like, no, technically I said one person, like how dare you? It's me, it's me, girl. So I hope that answers your question. Here we go. Let's get specific. Dreams are nice, but money is real. And we <laughs> really want to see how you bring your idea to life. In a maximum of 10 bulletin points, give us an outline for your dream study abroad redo trip. What are you doing? Some ideal travel dates, approximate costs, people involved. Don't overthink this. We just want to see some realistic details of your trip if you won the grant. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. So I've already gotten some applications in the application itself where they're like, oh, I love study abroad. Study abroad is so fantastic. Like my study abroad trip got ruined because I didn't get to do this. But if I had another chance, is that what this is asking? That's not what this is asking. It says dreams are nice. Money is real. Tell us what is exactly going to happen on your trip. What are you doing? Ideal travel dates. If you read through this again, you'll see that the travel date, um, I don't want to misspeak. I think it's by the end of this year. But you know where you can find that? The terms and conditions. You have to travel by a certain date within the next year. And so what I want to see is that like, if you're planning to go to Thailand and you're like, oh, I'm going to be sunny on the beach in Thailand. I'm going to go in November. I'll know that you haven't really researched it very much because November is the rainy season. So, you know, or like, oh, I want to go to Sweden, Stockholm, and study Swedish and lay in the sun all day in December. Uh, Sweden is four feet under snow in December, so like, I'm very confused with your application now. So all I wanna see is that you are interested in making this trip happen. You have done some basic research about it, like the best time of year to go. Approximately how much that flight might be. You might just say the flight is between 500 and $800. That's fine, that's enough detail for me. I don't need the exact flight number that you would ideally take. Like all I wanna see is that this trip in your brain is gonna cost around $5,000 or less or more um, and that you have a plan. Like if you have a trip, if you wanna to go to Antarctica and that's your dream trip and that's your dream study abroad, $5,000 is not gonna cover it. But you know what it will cover? Probably be about half of it. So if your dream is to study abroad in Antarctica and you're like, my trip is more than $10,000, I know that, but this $5,000 will go a long way in making it real for me. I plan to cover the rest of the 5,000 out of pocket or on my credit card or whatever. That's fine. Just say that. Like, outline that here so I know that it's realistic in your brain. And you don't pitch me a trip to Antarctica for $10,000 and be like, okay, the $5,000, $100 is for the flight. And $100 is for food. And $100 is for the tour. Because I'm going to be like, okay, <laughs> this investment is not going to go to good use because they are very unrealistic about how this trip will go. So what I want to see, again, is you not overthinking this. I don't need like a full, I, I mean, if you have a full itinerary, sure, if you can do that in 10 lines, like that's very impressive. But all I need is just high level. Like I plan to go probably sometime in June. Um, I'm gonna do this, this, this. Like it's a, I wanna go for seven days. So probably the first three days I'll do this. The last four days I'll do this. Um, my goal is through the trip, bang, bang, bang. I'll probably try to stay at a hostel or a hotel or an accommodation or with my cousin in this part of the city. Like I just wanna see it slightly come to life, okay? Any questions on this question? Again, it's 500 words max. It's about two to three paragraphs. Be concise. Again, try not to wax poetically. If every section you start off with like, ah, I was born in a cave. In the cave, well, I was it was so dark. I couldn't imagine a life where I could travel. If you start doing like poetic stuff every day, like every section, you're gonna run out of words too quick. So just be concise, stick to your story, be consistent throughout your application, and I wanna see it come to life.
Okay, any questions? Let me scroll through and look right now. Will this be live be saved? Yes, it will be saved. I will be doing mine today. That's what I wanna hear. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I wanna do this, but I feel overwhelmed as when I tried in college. That is what I don't wanna hear. I'm sorry you feel like that. Okay, it says your name is Michael Schilberut. I don't know how big it is. Um, but I don't wanna hear that. I, I feel bad that you feel like that. I'm trying my best to make you feel less overwhelmed. And my advice would you to be was that is that you have still about three to four weeks left to apply to the scholarship. Do a little bit a day. Do a little bit a day. Like, do the first, I mean, like I said, the first eight questions are give me questions. It's your name, your like zip code, your email address. They're very easy. There's really only five or six real questions that you have to think through. Each of them is 500 words. Do a question a day. That's my advice. And again, I think that I, hopefully it's less overwhelming than it was in college because I'm not asking for your like degree credits to transfer. I'm not asking for like your teachers to approve of it. No professors have to sign off of this. It doesn't even have to be a real study abroad course. It could be you learning to dance salsa in Puerto Rico for two weeks. It could be you learning how to write Japanese kanji because your uh, great aunt taught you a little bit when you were younger and like that makes you feel fantastic and you never got to learn because she died and like you're like, I wanna go back to Japan and learn kanji. Like it's in her memory. That would be a great pitch. I don't even know where these stories are coming from, but <laughs> I would love to see that. So. I hope you're not overwhelmed, um, but take it a little bit at a time and I would love to see your application. Um, very helpful. I saw this and kept thinking all the reasons why I sh wouldn't be able to be eligible, but you just made me feel so more confident to apply. That's what I want to say. Like, I know that any grant, any opportunity really in life, like this is any opportunity in life, the, the, the new job you want, like the house you want to buy, anything looks huge at a glance because it's foreign, right? But as you scroll through it yourself, as you hear about it yourself, we deconstruct it and then you take it bit by bit. So I am so glad that you are feeling better watching this live because that's what I want to do for y'all. Again, like I said at the beginning of this call, this is not a whoever plays the game right wins or like whoever guesses what I want the best wins or whoever appeals to me personally the best wins. That's not the case. I want people who need or deserve a study abroad redo, a second chance at study abroad to apply. And I wanna give you 5,000 bucks, like, that's it. Um, let me see, any more questions? The place I am applying to has a hostel options, but I read articles that many aren't that easy to book online. Will that be an issue? I have no idea. You should pitch me and uh, give me an approximate, like I ask in this question, like, don't overthink this. We just wanna see some realistic details of your dream trip if it came to life. Don't overthink this. Appreciate you doing this. Thank you. I'm glad this is helpful. I'm so, so glad I'm doing this too. Is this for a solo trip only? We're bringing it back. What we doing, y'all? What we doing, y'all? We're bringing it back to what? The frequently asked questions. Ding, 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 ding. Can I bring my kid slash husband slash boyfriend? Please click that and open it. But what I will say is that I am not the cops. I am not google i am not a board of directors i am a wee girl who wants to give a chance to study abroad and someone else so if you need a chance to study abroad and you have a good pitch and you convince me can you bring your significant other slash child slash dog i'm not the cops that should i don't care that's fine like i'm not gonna be on the trip i'm not gonna like see you post a picture of your husband on this trip with you and be like that five thousand dollars isn't going to you what the heck like boo i'm a, like i'm sending you to court that's not gonna happen. Like, I promise. Like, <laughs> it's chill. So, if you wanna bring a significant other, what I would say, like I said in this before, is just be transparent about that in your application. Just so that when you do your reflective piece, I'm not like, who are all these people? Like, your whole family is on this. So, if you pitch me that you're doing a solo trip to Thailand to find more about yourself, that's your why. And then your entire family's in the videos, I'm gonna be like, so that was a lie. Like, okay, so what I'm saying is be realistic, okay? <laughs> I feel like that's the least we can do for each other. Okay, um, let me see any other questions. Love that, I hope I get one. I hope you get one too, girl. I wanna see your applications come in. I, and again, I think I've already been talking about the very early applications. Um, some of them kind of missed the mark and I hope you view this now, you're watching this now and you can 
go back and resubmit. If you submit more than one application, we only look at the latest one. We only look at the most recent one you submit. Uh, but I've also seen such fantastic applications already. We have already seen beautiful stories about why you want a study abroad or why your study abroad got ruined and like how your sister study abroad and you didn't get to and you saw how much it impacted her and you're like, I hate myself for never like putting more effort into it and, and like making that experience for myself. So like I have already seen such great applications and like I'm already really excited. So if you're thinking about submitting one, please do. I like, I just want to see your story. Okay. Hearts. Yay. Love. I'll start reaching your itinerary. Oh, well, she said, I'll start researching my itinerary for my dream location. It was great to see this live. It was great motivation. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. I'm so glad. That is so great to hear. Very thorough explanation. Thank you. I have to figure out how to upload the video. Yeah. So we'll get into that too, actually now. Thank you for the great segue. Yes. The next one is the video submission. If you're some, if you're selected as a Pax Light grant awardee, you'll be, ed you're added to our like Pax Light grant alumni crew. So we're going to be giving out more grants in the future. Inshallah. So excited to be doing this. Um, and you're going to be added to our community of people who are ambitious and dedicated to make travel happen in their lives. So this is more than a grant. It's a mindset shift, honestly. I Hopefully you can tell that by this call, how I'm referencing like just tips for opportunities in your life in general. And like, it's not just this grant, like you should have this mindset in the rest of your life. Like I hope that you even go through this application process and, ha and leave with a different mindset in life. Like that's my hope for everything that I do. But anyway, in this video submission section, 90 second max, Tell me, what does Pax Light mission mean to you? How do you feel like you have embodied or tried to embody this mission in your life thus far? That's what I wanna see in this video. And again, as I started out this call at the beginning, and if you are coming in later, no problem, you can go back and watch it. But we've already seen the Pax Light mission statement, which is here. Pax Light mission, oops, is to help you seek risk, seize opportunity, skip debt, and see the world. How have you tried to do that in your life thus far? And it doesn't mean that you have had to be like, I'm super ambitious and perfect and I've studied abroad. And like, I hack my life, I hacked my way through my life thus far. Like, I'm a millionaire at 12. Like, we don't need to see your hustle story. But what I want to see is like that our mission and that why you resonate and how in your life you're making small steps to becoming a person who seeks risk, tries, challenges yourself, pushes yourself out of your comfort zone sees this opportunity when it's presented to you, skips debt because we're financial queens and kings and theys, and tries to see the world and like why travel is important to you. So again, wow does my mission resonate with you in video form? And it can be just like this. It can be super casual like this. It can be a produced video. It could be a TikTok where it's like voiceover. It could be a slideshow of images with you just talking over it. It could be a typed like voice thing, text to voice thing. It doesn't really matter. It just has to be video format. And so what we say with this, I have so many little button things. Okay. Please paste the link to a video that you post. You can't upload the actual video file into this. It would take up too much space and like it's hard to send to people. It's really hard. So we need a link to it. You can upload that into YouTube. You can mark it as unlisted. So you can just, Make a YouTube account, drag and drop it, and send us the link. You could post it on TikTok. If you have a TikTok account, just send us the link. Don't delete it, because then we can't judge it, but post it. And don't put it on private, because then we can't see it, but just post it. Um, you can put it on Instagram if you want to, too. That's totally fine. Put it here on Instagram. If you have a link to it, just put the link here. If there's any other way, you can put it on Vimeo. You can put it anywhere that we can see it publicly. Post it. We would like you to use the hashtags PL Grant and hashtag SARG so that we can find it. So if you submit the link to it and we're like, uh, in two months when we go to grade this, we're like, the link isn't working with all, like maybe she changed the title of it. Maybe something changed. We can go back and go through these links and hashtags and look for your name that you applied with. Like, okay, we're looking for Jessica, 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 Jessica. Oh, Jessica's right here. We can be able to find it ourselves. So that's why we're asking for you to use the hashtags if you post it on social media so that if we are trying to judge you and we can't reach you, we have a chance of finding your video. Okay. Um, that's the video piece. And I know the video or like the mixed media or whatever piece is usually the most overwhelming, but like, I feel like that's, we're, all you have to do is what we're, what we're doing right now. It's really 
chill. And again, it can be highly produced. We'd be pretty impressed at that. It can be really low budget. It could be just you talking into a camera. It can be whatever. So chill. Don't overthink it is the theme of this call. Don't overthink it. Talk to me, babe, though. I want to see your vibe. I want to see your energy. I want to see how excited you are or how scared you are. Maybe you're like, I'm scared of blah, but I'm applying to this anyway. Like, please excuse how nervous I am on camera, but I'm terrified. I've never done anything like this, but I need this. I need the study abroad redo. Be perfect to be compelling. Don't overthink it. Okay, so that's the video piece. Okay, I think this one is next. This is like a survey type question. And really, uh, this is kind of a reflective piece for you too while you're going through application. Because you're going through the application, you went through the page and stuff. I want you to check in with yourself, really. How are you feeling? If you were not selected for this grant, what would be your next step? That's something I want you to think of before you even apply. Like, I want you to be like, okay, Real talk, there's only three grant winners and there's probably more than three people applying. So like, if I didn't win this, what am I gonna do with my life? Because you've just spent all this time convincing me that you need a study abroad redo, that you want more intentional travel in your life, that you deserve a little trip, a little treat. Like, what are we gonna do about it? So this is something that I had to do for myself anytime I apply to something, that I'm like, okay, big talk. I just put my whole heart and soul and butt into this. If I don't win, I'm gonna throw up. So I have to get realistic and say, okay, if I don't win, like, what am I going to do? And that's why I want you to reflect on this. This was not going to affect your like chances of winning, but it's a check in with you really. And a check in with us, basically how well we did with this application so far. Like if you get here and you're, I'm going to give up. No one ever wins these things. Trying is useless. I'm going to be like, oh. <laughs> this did not work out the way I thought it would. So I want you to be honest when you get to this section. Again, it's like a quick button press so I hope you don't need coaching through this but like be honest with yourself be honest with me and also get inspired by the answers because okay and saying you want to instead of saying you want to give up and that you never want to try anything again you could join my email newsletter and get these scholarships and grants that I share every single week sent to you and you can just apply to something else or you could save your submission materials your essays and your videos from this to reuse for the next grant, which I hope you do. That's a huge hack that I share in my course, um, the 10K grant, how to take $10,000 trips for free. That's a huge part of that course is that like, the reason I'm able to apply, apply, apply is because I don't restart, like I don't recreate the wheel for every single application. I'm saving everything. I'm saving everything. So I hope that this just, you know, those are some ways that this could impact the rest of your life beyond this scholarship, but also get you thinking like, if you don't, if you didn't win, worst case scenario, it's not the end of the world and this is still a valuable experience. All right, we're again, I think there's like three questions left y'all. Um, uh, but still drop any questions that you have in the comments and I'll answer them. Um, let me see what the next one was. Okay, yes, this is one. Again, not the end of the world. I almost want to freak out if we're like, I'm not going to wait anyway. Uh, like, we're back. We're here. If you were not selected, choose three URLs from like the Paxlight PTO dashboard that we have. The whole list of other scholarships and grants and remote jobs and paid for internships and sponsored international conferences and everything else that travel opportunities that we have. Find three that you would. You don't have to actually apply to them but you would want to, or that you might, or that you actually will apply to. Cause we just want to see again, that you're not hail marrying this opportunity that if you don't win it, you're going to like self-destructive, like never apply to anything again. That's the opposite of what we want. That's the opposite of the Pax Light mission. The Pax Light mission is that like we, if a door closes, we bust open, like we, we pop open a window, like we keep going. So that's the Pax Light mission. And that's the person that we want to win these scholarships is a person who keeps going. So that's why we have this little side quest for you. It takes two and a half minutes. Go to the dashboard, hide, like copy and paste three links that are interested to you and put them in here. Perhaps what might be the most important part, it's not actually, well, perhaps what may, might be the most underrated part of this application, what is your favorite emoji? I have nothing to say about this except if you know, you know, and that I highly recommend that you 
read the terms and conditions to any scholarship or grants that you apply to. Next question. These are closeout questions. We reached the end, y'all. If you got through this, you're sweet. You're sailing. You're flying. You're like, you're good. How'd you find out about the grant? Drop down. Buh. Choose one. Scale of one to ten. How are you feeling, babe? How are you feeling at the end of this? Again, this is for you. A reflection period. This is also for us to see how this application made people feel because I don't know. I really love this. I really love giving people the opportunity. I love opportunities. I love scholarships. I love grants. I love how much they can change your life. But by the end of them, I want people to feel inspired and encouraged and like I uh, feel great and not feel depressed. So please answer this honestly too. If you go through this application and you're like, I feel fantastic. Honestly, this has changed my mindset about life. Like this makes me want to apply to a bunch more stuff. This makes me want to like search for opportunity in my own life. That's so great. That's what I want to hear. Um, but if we get a lot of bad feedback, we're going to be like, okay, we need to rework even more how we do this application in this process because I want, again, people to leave any interaction with me feeling like they, they can take, a, take on the world. That's what I want you to feel like. So if you don't feel like that, just tell us honestly. I literally think that's it. I literally think that's it. These are like the before you submit, yes, I agree to these terms and conditions. Yes, you want to join the newsletter. Again, you don't have to probably is in your best interest though. If you like what I'm doing and you like this grant, you can be notified of the next grant. And then yeah, it's, you confirm that you're eligible. So if you go through this whole application process and you're not eligible, I'm gonna be like, why did you waste everybody's time, including your own? Don't waste your time. If you are not eligible and you know that and you're like, okay, but maybe I could tweak or convince or kind of lie a little bit. Don't do that. Don't waste your time. We will have more grants in the future. We will have them open to more nationalities. We'll have them for different like themes, different reasons to travel. If you don't need another study abroad experience, don't worry, there'll be another grant. And there literally will be another grant and scholarship and PTO because we have a whole dashboard of them that we update every week. It does not have to be mine that you apply to. We share all of the ones that we find that I find in that dashboard. So if this one's not a good fit, I'm gonna be like, you know what you should do? Go to the dashboard and like apply the perfect one for you because I'm sure it's in there. All right, I think that that is it. I feel more confident in my application thanks to this line. I'm so glad. I'm glad to hear that. Glad I was able to connect. Thank you for this opportunity. This is my pleasure. And I'm not a Chick-fil-A employee, but it truly is my pleasure. This is how, this is like what I love to do in life. So I'm so happy to be able to bring this scholarship to life, honestly. Um, someone just said, LOL, I enter lots of contests and I often go into, oh, and I, I went often when people wonder how I do it all. I tell them the same thing. I read the terms and conditions of the giveaway. So much valuable information is in there. That's something I very much harp on in my course, the how to win $10,000 trips for free. If you're not reading everything, if you're not watching every video, if you're not reading the terms and conditions, if you're not reading through the application page, you're missing out. I think it reduces your chances of winning, honestly. Anything you apply to. When will the dates of travel have to be? Yep, you can see them right here. It says, I am able to take my study abroad redo trip before December 31st, 2023. So you have to take it by the end of this year. When will we have to use the money by? Retweet myself, what I just said. When will the days of travel be? Okay, I think that's it. Okay, I'm so excited. I hope that this was helpful. I wanna keep this video concise because I am gonna post it on my feed and I want it to be helpful to those who watch this later and like they don't have to like fast forward back all the stuff. But I hope this has answered any questions that you guys have had. If you have any last minute questions, answer like ask them now and I can answer them while I'm here. Um, but otherwise, I really hope that this has been helpful. I hope that this has demystified a lot of the grant. I hope it's made it less overwhelming. I hope it's shown you the people behind it who will be judging it. Um, and maybe we'll do that now. We'll look at who the judges are because that's something we answer here in the frequently asked questions section. It says, who are the study abroad redo grant judges. Me, um, Aaliyah, the CEO at Go Overseas, one of the sponsors of these grants. Shout out to Go Overseas. If everyone can give them a round of applause, they have given us $5,000 to give away as part of this grant. Again, there are three 
grants giving away in this one, 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. So she is the COO at Go Overseas. Eliz is her content and community manager at Go Overseas. So both of them are part of the sponsors and they're also on the judging committee. Christina Jade, Christina Jane is a Pax Light internship alumni, actually. Christina Jane is um, one of the original Pax Light interns of 2020, summer of 2020, as soon as the pandemic hit. Christina was one of my interns and she was on the PTO team. And so she is coming back now to be a judge for this first Pax Light scholarship. It feels like such a great culmination. So she's one of the judges, Deidre. Mathis is a founder at Wanderstay Hospital Group. She is the founder of the Wanderstay Hostels. If you don't know her, you should follow her. She's a badass in her own right. And she also has her own scholarships. She does hosted um, study abroad trips one week in Costa Rica for students. And she does that every single year. I think she just closed that for her scholarships just now. They're doing, she's doing another trip to Costa Rica. So I love her. I love the way she does her scholarship, which is why she's on this grant. Um, advisory board. Emma Welch is a creator manager at LinkedIn. I met her through LinkedIn. She's fantastic. She's a judge. She does creator management for Gen Z creators. Um, Onika Raymond, please. Onika Traveler, like she's one of the judges. So you can see that these are regular people. These are, again, not like, I don't know, just like unattainable, unimaginable people. Like there are people just like you and I, they just happen to be fantastic judges and creators and forces in the travel and opportunity in social media space, which is why they're on the advisory panel. All of your applications will be going through them and me and uh, Pac Taylor, who's on the Paxlight team. If you know Taylor, you know Taylor. She's like the Paxlight girl. But so these are the people who will be looking at your application. Diverse group of careers, of expertise, of ex life experiences, of people. I've tried to make it a holistic view of of people who'll be looking at your application. So I'm so excited for this. I'm doing one last scan for any last minute questions. Nena the Navigator said, this is awesome. Excited about this opportunity. Thank you. I'm so glad you're excited. Um, Harley Lynn said, this was really helpful. I'm glad to hear that. I think that's it. That's all I got. Thank you all so much for joining. I can't wait to see your applications again. Press submit by April 15th, April 15th, 2023. That's the last day to submit for this grant, the study abroad redo travel grant. You could win $5,000 to make your study abroad redo happen. It's not often that we get second chances uh, in life at, especially like these big life milestones. It's not often that we get a second chance at them. This is what I hope um, will be a second chance for three amazing people. All right. Thank you. See you later.